Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Today's podcast is brought to you by Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. It is so super easy. I know it's a new year and so new health goals is a must because guess what? If you don't take care of yourself, how in the heck can you take care of anybody? So this year, make health and wellness a top priority with the help of Care Of monthly subscription vitamin service, whether you're focused on glowing skin, boosting your energy levels, getting more sleep, or just generally being healthy, you can build a vitamin routine that's made just for you and your health goals. So do something good for yourself and your health this year. They really make it easy to stick to the health-related solutions. So let me tell you, they've got this online quiz that's fun and it's super, super easy. They're going to ask you about your diet, your health goals, your lifestyle choices. It takes like under five minutes to find out your personal scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. So you can find out where you're lacking with Kara's online quiz and get back on track to reaching your health goals. And I know that it can be super hard to know what vitamins or supplements you should be taking. They're very transparent about what you need and what you don't need. They even have supplement options if you're vegan or vegetarian to match your dietary needs. My favorite thing about this program is the supplement packs. They're customized just for you. So you have one pack that you take each day. You don't have to open up a bunch of bottles and pour out a bunch of pills. It's already done for you, people. It's perfect for those of us who are crazy busy and we've got that on-the-go lifestyle. And of course, you can track your progress with the Care Of app. You got to go over to the website and take this quiz. It is so easy and the results are mind-blowing. So visit TakeCareOf.com and for 25% off your first month of personalized Care Of vitamins, you can use the promo code APCARES. So again, visit TakeCareOf.com and the promo code for 25% off is AP. Cares. That stands for Angela Profit Cares. So take your vitamins. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit. Thank you so much for joining us today on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I'm so excited to be talking with Rachel Sheeran. And if you know who Ed Sheeran is, she's not related. We already had that conversation. She is a hospitality speaker and a trainer who is on a personal mission to help people sell more, be happy, and define success on their own terms. I love it. She's been featured in Inc. Magazine for her unorthodox keynotes and team training. Rachel has also appeared on This Week in Weddings, Lodging Leaders, and more. Rachel's training clients include, are you ready? The hotel sales team, which, oh my God, they so need it, catering companies, meeting planners, and anyone that's dedicated to serving others and celebrating anything. Take the stress out of it, girl. Rachel currently serves as the director of education and programs for WIPA, which if you if you don't know what WIPA is, we'll talk about that in a minute. And she is a longtime NACE member. If you don't know what that acronym is either, we'll talk about that. And takes, ready, her margaritas without salt on the rim. Ah, I love salt on the rim. <laughs> so Rachel, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Angela. I am so pumped to hang out and chat a little bit. Yay. 
right. Well, before we jump off with you, sometimes we have some brand new listeners on the podcast that aren't familiar with our fun little acronyms. So really quickly, can you tell us what WIPA, obviously you and I know, and NACE and what those stand for and what they are? Oh, absolutely. So WIPA stands for the Wedding Internationals Professionals Association. And if you can think about it, it is an international organization. There's chapters um, all over the country, um, you know, here in America. And it, essentially what it is, it's, it's the best of the best. The wedding professionals that are like you, Angela, they are legacy. They have seen it all, done it all, lived to tell the tale. Um, and they're really committed in not just, you know, connecting with vendors and leveling up, but continuing education, pushing trends. Um, it, it's just a, it's a safe haven for creatives who love brides. Yes. And, okay. You know, maybe, maybe have a tale or two about some of their clients too. Uh, on the other side, NACE is the National Association of Catering and Events. And this, again, a national organization that's a safe haven for um, professionals, not just in the catering side of things, whether you're in a hotel or an off-premise uh, in-house caterer, things like that, but also for anyone who's in events. This could be everyone from the shutter booths and tap snaps of the world and photo booths, photographers, planners. Um, these are folks really getting it done and embracing that creativity. Yes, absolutely a love of food, but creativity Education, a lot of them are a great mix. A lot of chapters have a great mix of solo business owners, small business, and then larger corporations and team members such as the Marriott, Ritz Carlton, things like that. If, if you're not a member of NACE or WIPA, I encourage you to just go to Good Gold, Google, Google NACE in your city or WIPA in your city and see the closest chapter and, and check out a meeting or two. Just see the speakers they're bringing in. I attribute NACE uh, specifically. I've been a member almost 10 years at this point for a lot of my success in the industry. And get involved. I mean, it's like anything. What you put in, definitely what you get out. I love that saying. It's like one of my favorites. <laughs> There's a little, um, well, they're not little anymore, but when I first got into weddings and just events, like I knew how to do it because I grew up around it, but I didn't know like what networking was and really about building relationships. And, you know, I was raised like you be nice to everyone. You treat everyone the same and you treat ev everyone with respect and you talk to everyone. And so I've always gone into these types of situations. And the first one I was in was called Tweeza, which is Tennessee Wedding Event Special Association. I think oh, it was yeah. like 30 members when I joined. And, and then you then, blew it up, Angela. Well, all I mean, this, you joined and everyone this was else. so long ago. I mean, I was like a, such a child back then. And now there's like, I think close to 300 members. But I will say that, um, you know, it was great. I was on the board for a couple years and I believe I was in it for maybe six or seven years. And then I started to hear about NACE and ILEA. WIPA wasn't um, founded yet. And so then I started to get involved there. And what I started to learn was Tweeza was a wonderful way locally for me to start out, but I'd outgrown it. And, um, you know, I did all that I could there. And it's really for newer vendors because there's a place for all of us. But one thing Absolutely. I will say is to like say like it's okay like it's okay if you outgrow an organization and you move on and you go to help others you can help others grow and so then I moved on and started to do um, a little bit with ILEA and that was a newer chapter in Nashville then I've done some stuff with NACE and MPI which is Meeting Planner International and um, did that for a few years and then got involved with the entrepreneur organization network which all of these things, it's like people think that they're just going to go get a listing on the website and you're going to get business and people, it doesn't work that way. Like you just said, Rachel, you get out what you put in. And so that's like my favorite thing. But I will also say, I know people that are in like five or six organizations and it's like full-time job. <laughs> So oh. pick one, pick one or two to focus on and grow with. And like, it's okay to, um, you know, do all that you can in one 
And people ask me all the time, like, what did you do to get started? I'm sure you get the same questions. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the organi organizations are great. And I love how you like flat out said you attribute some of your success to building relationships in these groups. So you would think that we're doing an ad for them right now, but we're not. <laughs> I was about to say, we're going to have to, we're going to have to uh, sample this and put it on a membership video or something. Right. But, you know, Angela, I love hearing your perspective too about, you know, all the different groups, because I think sometimes that is really overwhelming that there's so many, I mean, you mentioned MPI and I mean, what's great is that there's a home for you no matter what you do. And, you know, you might be thinking, uh, you know, oh, no, I'm, you know, just I, I do something really unusual. Well, we love that. And who are your clients? Go where your clients are. How about go where someone can teach you something? I will tell you, I served on um, the programs committee for my niche chapter here in Charlotte for about two or three years. And I've got to tell you, Angela, I don't have your planning power, your organizational, you know, like wizardry. I don't have it. But when I was in catering, I needed to understand what a planner did. I needed to understand what made a great partner for them. Um, I needed to honestly respect and appreciate and be able to applaud and say, yes, snaps, look at that. You know, even things just as little as putting the silverware at the end of the buffet. From a catering side, I knew it. But from a, you know, um, really anticipating guest needs, making layouts, that kind of stuff, I got a whole new appreciation and education that gave me a leg up when I was selling or being a great vendor partner in my industry. So it, yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it, the knowledge out there is so amazing and you'll find it a lot of times at those professional groups. Yeah. But not just, not just the, the networking and yes, the growing of the business, but the growing of self and the growing of knowledge. And, you know, I mean, Angela, when you started, I, I don't think there were podcasts. No, I know, no. <laughs> you know, we didn't have these conversations with awesome people discussing real things like you have here. And you honestly, you'd only get it after a lot of NACE meetings and maybe a cocktail or two. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're bonded by war a little bit. And we, we have a tough industry. We have the best industry. We which I think, industry. I think is a great lead in, which I want you to share with our listeners a little bit about you and your background. But really, guys, I want you to listen to this whole thing beginning to end because we're going to be talking about some really great stuff about, you know, we're all dedicated. We're all hard workers. We love people. We love hospitality. But there's this thing called burnout. If you ever feel it. Um, you could be early on in your career, mid, late, changing, whatever. Um, but I want to address it. And so I love your topic, Rachel. But before we jump into that, like if you'll share with our listeners a little bit about your background and then how you actually got into like hospitality and doing weddings and events. Absolutely. So my background is I'm the oldest child of a big Italian American Catholic family. Ooh, fun. Uh, I tend to be a little bossy. I like to think in charge, but you know, I grew up down here in North Carolina and I love it. I went to college for English. I thought I might want to be a lawyer and like anyone with half a brain, honestly, I love a lawyer paycheck. I admire the, um, you know, service they give in the world, but I spent about five months working for a law firm before I went to law school and I hated it which is my origin story into hospitality, I ran directly from the arms of a tax law firm into a low paying but fabulously wonderful job um, working for a company in Philadelphia. It was a tech company. And the great thing about tech is that, well, they don't know anything about events, but being from the South, kind of like you, Angela, I always had that cheerfulness to me and that my pleasure to me, even though I never worked at the Ritz Carlton or Chick-fil-A. So I fell into a customer service role and, you know, quickly just started doing events for them. And I loved it. I mean, could you imagine, I didn't even realize this was an industry, making people's day better, celebrating everything, like having people go, oh my God, this is awesome. And you actually had fun in all the hard work you were doing it. Oh my right. God. I was hooked. I was so hooked, Angela. And what I realized as kind of my transition through the um, events world was, okay, you know, we talked about it. My planning details, not so great. I went more on the sales side of things because I knew that the companies I worked for, I was, um, I worked for Shutterbooth 
here in Charlotte, an amazing owner here, Art, and his family own this franchise, and they are fantastic. I learned so much. He gave me so much freedom and empowerment. He brought me to Nice um, and got a lot of education. Eventually, long story short, is I ended up at an awesome off-premise catering company here in Charlotte. And we have an amazing leader um, who wanted to grow and wanted to grow quickly with great people. And um, it was truly the ride of a lifetime. I was so proud. We, you know, tripled our um, staff while I was there. We definitely more than tripled our income um, in terms of the business we were bringing in. And we elevated not just our brand, but also all of Charlotte. Because when one, it, when one business succeeds, I think we all succeed. Because we've all been in that position where we see someone else doing something and we're like, oh, we better, we better up our game, huh? I and love it. Healthy competition, you know what it is like. In the South, it's definitely the bless you competition, right? Totally. Blessings to you. There's so many blessings to go around. And on the other side, you know, we make sure that, you know, our stuff is good on our side too, and we're keeping up. And it was awesome, Angela. I had, you know, a six figure salary. I had a team under me. I had titles. I had won awards. And I woke up one day, Angela, and I hated it all. And oh, no. it, yeah, Angela, it, I have goosebumps right now. It still feels, I can remember it like yesterday. And what had happened in retrospect after years of healing is that I was burned out. Yep. And I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I loved what I did, right? I loved who I did it for. I loved who I did it with, but I had snapped and I had somehow gotten resentful and transactional. Like, have you ever caught yourself talking to someone? And as you say, you know, Oh, how's your mother? Maybe their mother was sick. You start thinking, Oh, hurry up. I've got to pick up my kids or I've got to go, you know, um, go to the grocery store. Like God, I wonder if that client's ever going to write me back. And you, you I almost had this out of body experience, Angela, where I was not being the person I was proud to be. Yeah. And so I quit. <laughs> I quit cold turkey. And I got to tell you, I have a keynote called F this S and it is about how I, <laughs> I quit. Okay. So I'll leave it there. But honestly, Angela, it was such, it, it, it's funny now, but it, it wasn't funny at the time because I threw away my career. Yep. I threw away my connections, my, my reputation. I had worked so incredibly hard to build. And worst of all, I had thrown away an industry and a career path that at one point I remember, I mean, I constantly cry when the dads give the speeches at weddings. I love that moment. Like that there's no better industry that's really founded on love. Well, okay, maybe like nursing and like medical, but I, I can't handle blood. So it's the best Me industry either. without blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of my origin story. And so I like to say that I fell into hospitality and hospitality really kind of saved me. Yeah. But on the other side too, the, there was definitely a path in, in my journey in hospitality. It hasn't been linear and it hasn't been easy, but it's been full of reinvention, which is, I think, why I love listening to a lot of your podcast guests. You're all, you <laughs> yeah. know, not only do you understand a changing business, but everyone's story, you know, it's like Brene Brown says, if you hate someone, you know, look a little closer because they've got a story. Yeah. And everyone nobody's does. ever born the way that they are. We, we change and grow along the way. And what you're doing now, and this is where some people, they're like, oh my God, you're getting older. And, oh my, and I'm like, I love my age because I have a lot of experience in life and business. And so like what you're doing now and how you've built your career now and how you're helping and training and what you're doing now, there's no way in hell you could have been doing what, or you can do what you're doing now without experiencing all of this other crazy shit where in the moment it's like, God, I'm like so depressed. I haven't slept in days. Like I've been there too. And it w hence the reason we both like to teach now <laughs> and train people. Cause, but I didn't, we, I didn't have that. Like I didn't have someone like coaches and in our industry, like that wasn't a cool thing back then. So it's just like a very alone 
um, feeling that it's like you don't even know what to do or where to go or who to talk to or who to help because it's such a happy industry. You just have to put your fake smile on and get up like everything's okay when you're so tired. You you, you almost fall asleep driving to your meeting. I don't know if you ever had that. <laughs> but, Angela, I so I so feel what you're saying. And to your point too, you're so right. We are, for better or worse, we're a very appearance-based, you know, in industry and forget all that talk about social media. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you walk into a room with your peers, you are expected to be your brand. And I don't think anyone's hiring, for example, a wedding planner that's miserable or a photographer that complains about their clients. And so it's that thing where, you know, you meet someone and you almost have this tango, almost like we're dating. We're like, okay, is Angela cool? Can Mm -hmm. I talk to her? Will she not judge me? Will she not share, you know, like my fears or my failures? How about Mm -hmm. failures? Oh my gosh. And so you're right. I mean, you know, you live long enough, you gather enough experience. And I think if you have, you know, that courage and vulnerability, like, you know, you share and you teach others so you can, if you can save them 10%, of what you had to go through. I mean, I know you're a systems queen, so you're already, you're already saving my bacon with some of my systems. It's not my <laughs> talent, but it's really nice because we do. I know we so, so funny. We work in hospitality and yet we're so very difficult and hard on ourselves. And I will tell you being a high performer, that is one of the cardinal things we're at risk for is burnout because nothing's ever good enough you know, we, we reach our goals. And by this, by the second bottle of champagne, we are already setting newer, bigger, faster, stronger goals. Yeah. And I, I love it, Angela. I never want to stop. I don't think you do either, but there's got to be a better way because 72% of hospitality professionals quit their jobs every year. That's just, it's crazy. It, it's it, when I read that statistic, it's a census bureau statistic from 2017 I could not believe it. And yet I was one of those people. Yeah. And I thought, okay, let's dive in. Like I'm, you know, I'm laying on the therapy couch every week, but I had to do more work. And I don't know about you, but once you get this idea, all these questions start popping in your head. Why? Yeah. And yeah. why isn't anyone talking about it? And just because we don't talk about it doesn't make mean that it's not real. Well, you know, again, I'm Catholic, so we don't talk about anything. <laughs> we don't say anything that's impolite. And I think that was part of my, you know, reasoning to want to become a speaker and a trainer on this. Not just, you know, the sales side, which I love because I think you can, you and I can agree. Mm-hmm. Money is awesome. It mm-hmm. is such a great tool to live the life you want, be the person you are, you know, donate to others, support others' businesses, all that stuff. But on the other side, it was like, okay, while you're in that hustle gang, are we watching out for that downside? Because burnout's going to come. That's the kicker. Once you recover from burnout, it's never gone. You just get better at recovering from it. Well, and I also feel like that is what makes you who you are and Like I ask people that I interview, like what's special and unique about what you do now? And again, that's what exactly what makes you so special and unique is because you've gone through it, you you found coping mechanisms, you came out of it, and now sharing and talking about it, it it matters. And you probably help a lot of people like not only save their careers or how to turn it around or how to be, become more manageable with boundaries. But I've had a few people in my time where they have said, like, you saved my life. And, you know, there, there's even been people, and I worked in a mental hospital around a lot of suicidal people. Um, yeah. And so they, they clearly have these thoughts because it is their identity. And they're so unhappy making other people happy because they're miserable because they don't know how to set boundaries that they actually have those, those really like horrible thoughts of like, I'd rather be dead than have to do this. And like, I'd say that to myself every once in a while, but like, I'm kidding. Like, I don't really mean I'm going to jump off a bridge and like drown, right? which I'd rather do that than like clock in to corporate America nine to five and do the same thing every day. Like, that's not why we're put on earth. (laughs) So, Amen. Amen. Just like I love, so, I love hearing that. Like, what a great honor that by sharing your truth and sharing your skills, people are responding like that. And Angela, I know you and I are kindred spirits anyway, no. but I always like to say, if you're not crying at the end of my speech, I've not done my job. 
because I haven't hit your heart because you know, when I started my business, I was very, very clear. I started my business because I'll tell you, I think trainers are so boring. They, they, (laughs) they, they read like manuals from the eighties and nineties. They tend to be old white guys. Now, full disclosure, I'm Mm -hmm. married a white guy. He will eventually be an old white guy. (laughs) It's nothing against them. It's just, what do you know about me? And what do you know about our industry? And what do you know about our spirit? And also let's face it, Angela, men can be good fathers, husbands, or businessmen. One out of three, they're like award-winning people. Mm -hmm. You know, women, we have so many roles to fulfill and so many pressures. And so when I started, I said, okay, first of all, you know, I'm going to create all of my own training material and I'm going to be a sales and happiness trainer. My clients that hire me, they care about their employees. They want their employees. Yes. Is there probably goals, ROIs, increase in profits, um, you know, more client closings, business expansion. Yes, yes, yes. But on the other side, they want their employees to thrive in their business. They want them to thrive as mothers or fathers, sisters, you know, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. And they see, I mean, not only is it that they see how happy people do great work, but on the other side of it, you know, a lot of us are working very closely with our teams. Mm -hmm. You, You probably could think of a few where you walk in every day and there's the Eeyore of the office or just somebody who is so committed to being miserable that you almost, I don't know, you don't want to engage with them. You you wonder, gosh, blessings to you. I hope you find a new job. It's toxic. It's so toxic. It it really is. And most people at their core, I believe are awesome people, but you know, they may have these wounds, they may have these fears. And so that's a lot of some of the things, depending on, you know, the group I come into and the goals that they have, that's a lot of what I talk about what are you scared of and what are we going to do to prevent it and what are we going to do to repair it because fear is a funny thing right i mean talk about something we don't talk about a lot it's we all have them but we hope oh okay well if i if i just keep going 80 hours a week maybe my fear of being a failure won't come up maybe my fear of ruining someone's wedding maybe my fear of not clicking save in caterie's oh my god oh my such god sleep when i was in catering if i don't <laughs> save something and it doesn't you know save as a definite order and then i wake up which by the way angela that's happened i've had people call at 1 p.m wondering where their 300 box lunches are that were supposed to be there at 12 and oh. I have had to get in a car and race over to our kitchen and help those guys assemble all the sandwiches and deliver it personally with my tail tucked between my legs. I mean, we have done it. I've served Jewish people pork, Angela. Not cool. Not mm. cool. It's one person I served him pork. And then the worst part, Angela, I did it again the next day by accident. Oh, oh you, you, you can't even imagine that, right? And that's, that's so, so funny in retrospect, not because it's funny at all, but because I survived, I certainly didn't feel like that in the moment, but yeah. we've made it every day up until now. And so we how, are better. Yeah. Like, so I have to totally divert for 30 seconds. Um, so Caterie's is great. I don't under, which I'm a software tech geek. And so whenever people, I am in a lot of beta groups, which means like you try out a platform, you test it out. So now the, the pre-qualification, it's like you hear a lot now about like pre-qualify your clients, like use psychology, make sure they're a good fit. Like you're interviewing them. They're not interviewing you and blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, now I'm like, is it cloud-based and does it auto save like Google drive? Cause if it don't, I'm going to keep using Google drive because of that very thing. And we had a nightmare this past year and it is a caterer that I dearly love and their system crashed and their backup was not appropriately hooked up and you don't know what you don't know till you lose your shit. Oh, yeah. And this is how I know like a lot about technology and, and especially Apple products. But anyway, They served the wrong um, menu um, at one of my like almost 400 person over a million dollar, you know, event. 
and um, the client. And of course, when you're the planner, like you're the face, you know, you recommend these people. (laughs) And I didn't know what had happened. um, But I'm just like, how can we fix this? I'm like, let's just make the best of it. Your guests are eating something. So let's just, and I, in my, in my head, I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, this is not the people for this to happen. And then, you know, after we got through the event and, you know, the two people that I work with the most, I mean, literally were in tears and they're like, I don't know how to tell you this because you're the backup queen. I've even coached them on backing up their technology. Um, And so I'm like, have you all contacted caterers and told them like they need blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, Yeah, but this was our fault. But also, this is how software developers get better because you share stories like this with them. And so they did end up having to refund the client some and they still were not happy and I had to get attorney involved, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's like where people, shit happens, get over it and move forward. But Mm -hmm. I guess my big question and what I want you to share with our audience is like, how did you like come out of the burnout and say, like, what inspired you to like move forward and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do to help others and to get myself out of this and just not really start over and relaunch. I mean, it is, but with all the knowledge and all the, like just all the stuff that you could share with people, what was that turning point for you? Absolutely. Uh, Well, you know, when it comes to burnout, uh, what I've discovered after research and talking, you know, it, at this point internationally about it to so many people who hear that message and come out and share their own stories with me, I, I kind of developed a profile, you know, high achieving folks, people who, um, you know, tend to be very goal oriented, who operate at a pretty quick pace uh, to start extroversion natures. Uh, they tend to be the most susceptible to burnout, at least quickly enough. And so some of the signs can be that you're transactional, that you're emotionless. Oh, it's the worst, the little straight, like, straight faced emojis. When you feel like that, you're like, no, um, you can tell that, you know, you really um, have kind of lost the meaning and you start to feel like a martyr. You start to be resentful. I I remember walking in the door and being resentful. I had to feed my dog and take him for a walk. And he is an angel puppy. How dare me to ever resent that. And it really was at at the core, Angela, it's burnout is when joy goes out of what you do. And the person that you like is gone. Mm -hmm. The person that you're proud to be is gone. When you think about a fear and how it burns out, it doesn't all happen slowly. It doesn't get extinguished. It, it slowly dies. And that's really where I think in retrospect, coming back from burnout, it's also like building a fire. Yeah. It's where, okay, what you've loved is extinguished. You know, the path that I went down, Angela, I quit my job. God bless my husband. It, you know, I'll be very frank with you. We were in that 150, you know, 160 combined income. Mm-hmm. And that was most of my income. And so we, I, when I quit, we went to $35,000 a year. How do you year. survive that? It was a you know? huge life. It, honestly, uh, my husband, he is the oldest out of seven children and the only boy. So I think he just had the patience <laughs> to know, to know about intense emotions. I really owe a lot to my sister-in-law and my mother. God bless him. <laughs> But, you know, he knew that I, you know, was begging not to go to work in the morning and that's not me. And I was crying at home because I was already anticipating tomorrow. And the long and story short of it is coming back from burnout, I think takes a, a lot of different directions. You know, for me, it definitely was going to a therapist. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. I walked in her office. I said, Hey, I don't want to talk about my past and I don't want to talk about my family, but I'm a workaholic and I quit my job and I'm freaking out. Can you help me? Good for and you. God bless Jenny, uh, my therapist. She was, <laughs> she didn't kick me out laughing. You know, of yeah. course we eventually had to talk about the past because nobody ever wakes up and says, oh yeah, you know, I've just burned out because, oh, it's all on me. No, we're a product. Just like you're talking about, we kind of snowball ourselves and it starts when we're little. And at the core, I think that through therapy and really just kind of peeling back all of the layers of should, I have to. I can't, I've always, about I've never, 
and even on a deeper layer, I don't deserve or I deserve this negative. There was a lot of self-talk and I'll tell you one of the books that changed my life. It's a great one. It's if, um, you know, you can order it on Amazon and be here in two days. It's called the desire map by Danielle Laporte. Have you ever read it? Angela? No, but I am going, so I do audible. Oh, <laughs> I oh, hope it's on audible. Danielle. Yeah. The desirable uh, map, the desire map, desire map. So what, what's high level top three takeaways from it? Essentially, that when you put how you want to feel as a leader in your life and you respect the desires and intuition you have uh, within you, we all have that little voice, right? When we, when we say, hey, don't date that guy, he's bad news. And then it turns out, well, he's bad news. He's a bad boy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we have it. And society, I think, gets in our way a little bit. You know, for well-meaning. One of the things I say, you know, that's been my experience with burnout is success is driven or designed for us as some linear line that it's always going to be just, you know, acceleration. And it's going to be flawless that you should graduate from college, get a job, get a promotion, get a condo, get a, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend, get married, get a dog, get a, get a bigger house, get a nicer car, get another promotion. And God. You know, that's, I mean, I know you felt that rat race before, and we know that the American dream is dead, but yet all of us high performers, we still, well, we want to be the exception. We want to prove the model. And at the end of the day, the desire map was probably the first book I'd ever read. Now, full disclosure, it's a little woo woo, but it's mostly <laughs> a workbook. It's mostly a workbook. So make it through chapter three and then do those exercises. And it's amazing. But you know, the big takeaway was, you know, success to me is very personal. Mm-hmm. And if I'm feeling good, oh, Angela, we've had those days girl, we are looking good. We're feeling ourselves. We've had a great client call. We've booked a new client. You know, we, we you know, like you, you're about to launch yet another um, book and online yeah. resource and everything's going well and the doors open and there's no traffic and somebody buys you a drink for free or, you know, you get your dry cleaning um, because for being a good customer, they just give it to you for free. We've all had those days, right? Like Bruce, yep. like Jim Carrey and Bruce Almighty, where he uses it and all the cars just magically park <laughs> and he can just drive forward. We've <laughs> had those days. And what Danielle argues is that it starts with feeling good and feeling like you're going to expect the good things that you desire in life. And it, it, you know, again, for being Catholic, if anyone out there, I'm retired Catholic now. Me but, too, girl. All right, what's up? We got the guilt and we sometimes go for the wine and Christmas music. A and C. Right? Amen. But it's, it's one of those things where I think desire, depending on your background, has either been over enjoyed or it's really been shut down. And what I realized was in my very perfect world, I remember as a kid, I would gather up all of my stuffed animals, my bunnies and my puppies and my bears. And I would say, okay, you guys, today I believe in you. And today we're going to clean the bedroom. And I would motivationally speak to them, you know, and Mm -hmm. with the purpose and I'd set out a plan. And if I were to be honest, I, I always wished I was an actress or I was up on stage or I was in a band, you know, inspiring people and making them feel something. And after burnout, after, you know, going through it and starting to get back and using Danielle's methods, I start to get that first glimmer of something that excited me and the words that I will never forget popped into my head. Why the fuck not me? (laughs) Exactly. Right. (laughs) Right. I mean, I had had all these thoughts. You know, I'm a plus size person. You don't see a lot of plus size people up on stage. But well, you're gorgeous. I can up <laughs> and I and I am. And thank you so much for that. I mean, it's one of those things where I started to realize, oh my God, I've been operating on a thought and belief system that that basically squashes who I really want to be and who I am. And so, girl, once I let the record go and I let that freak flag fly, I mean, I, I still I have to pinch myself a little bit. People pay me money. Corporations and associations pay me money to deliver a talk with the F word in the title. Angela, yeah. I couldn't yeah. even say but as a kid or stupid. Like I, I, but that's not who I am. I'm just a little bit rock and roll and a little bit rebellious. 
And I would say that that resource was really, really helpful. And, you know, something I encourage to all my audiences is when you're recovering from burnout, yes, absolutely. Get clear on your motivators, get clear on your why, um, get clear on the type of, um, you know, schedule you want, you know, desire. If you want to work remotely and, and wear no shoes, great. If you want to wear Louboutins and, you know, have four, um, you know, private jets, I, I support all of the stream. But whatever you do, please make sure that you're going after success that really means something to you and that really lights you on fire. Look for other people who are living the life that you want and say, thank you for succeeding. Thank you so much because it proves that it is possible. And why not me? We hear so many stories of, you know, started from the bottom. Now I'm here. And yeah. congratulations, Angela. We're not even starting from the bottom, girl. Right. Like we, we have all this knowledge. We have education. And I'm, I'm sure you're like me. You have some badass industry friends that you can call up. You yeah. can have some personal friends that believe in you even on those days where Angela freaking profit might have that like, Oh God, I hope this is good. And you can pick up that phone and be like, you are amazing. You have never failed. Like <laughs> you are serving the world. And you're like, yes, Jesus, like, <laughs> let's do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. And when you're chasing it, I mean, Angela, I'd love to know what success looks like for you. And you know, like if that's changed, cause I think that's the other side, right? It yeah. Changes. Yeah. And like also too, what I've learned over the time is, um, it, it's, it's actually really crazy how life things can like present themselves and how I've learned to listen and be open to receiving new opportunities and information. Mm -hmm. And several years ago when I kind of felt myself like not being excited like if I'm not excited about a wedding or event, like I don't need to be freaking doing it, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can yeah. usually feel the synergy between a potential client or opportunity. And so as I started to feel myself getting kind of burnt out, I mean, when you, after you do over 200 weddings in a, a given uh -huh. year, calendar year, it's kind of, my hair was falling out. I gained a ton of weight. You know, I just wasn't taking care of myself and... Um, you know, but I didn't really, I never thought like, Oh, I'm burnt out, but I knew I didn't love it that much anymore. And it's not about the money at all. It's mm -hmm. about, but, but I had to go through that so that a coach could tell me, which I, I hired a coach then and who taught me how to, he's like, okay, our goal is to do 50 next year and then 40 and then 30 and then 20 and then 10. And then I'm like, but how am I going to pay my overhead and, and my people and, when you sit down and you see in front of you, like, holy shit, you have to generate this much money just to run a business. And that's what these people who are hobbyists don't freaking know. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to, you know, teach it and hit my head against the wall. But what I'm learning is these people that, you know, take my classes on how to be a productive wedding planner and how to be profitable. Like they don't care about making money. <laughs> they actually just want to have fun. I'm like, you're, you're not my client. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. what I've learned is like, you know, that next year when I'm like, okay, I'm getting to the year where it's like, we're just going to do 20. What, what the hell am I going to do? Um, not only was I more profitable and doing less because I was getting bigger opportunities where I could focus more, other opportunities started to present themselves and I started to think differently. And so like even next year, um, we're opening up a, a, a lady called to hire me to, for consulting to help her get some systems together to actually be a professional speaker because a lot of people were asking her to speak. She's like, I don't even know how much to charge. I don't even know this. I don't even know that. And she's like, you know, some people, they charge 5000 and 10000 She's like, that seems crazy to me. And I'm like, but hold on, like all your knowledge, all your experience, you've been doing this almost 20 years. It takes how long to prepare a talk? How much money do you spend getting your hair done and your nails and looking appropriate for your brand and your clothing? And you can't wear the same clothes every time you speak because of social media and da, 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 da. And I'm like, it's a lot of preparation. Then if you travel there, you know, outside of expenses, you've got to deal with kids and dogs and the housekeeper and the cameras. I mean, there's just so much that people don't think about. It's not fun to just hop on a plane and go talk to people. Like you have to prepare. And so that comes with the price tag because it's time and time's precious. 
the older we get. Mm -hmm. So even so I started helping her and then she was founding a co-working space for women. And after getting into it, she's like, you know, I know you're really busy, but I really need a co-founder and I, I really need your business brain. And so can you just, you know, come on board? And I think she was afraid to ask me yeah. and I'm like, you know, we are busy. However, I'm not closed off by saying, no, this is crazy. I don't like to commit to long-term term things. That's why I like to plan <laughs> weddings. And then, you know, it's over. There's a lot of things. Right. Oh, congratulations. Bless <laughs> you. <laughs> New client. Welcome. Yeah. And so I'm just like, let me think about it. I'm, and she's like, yeah. so you're not saying no. I'm like, no, just let me, you know, let me think. And so I'm like, I am getting older. My sister's kids that I adore, they're getting older They're I'm putting them to work. I'm like, this could be a really great environment for these young girls to be around powerful women in leadership who want to lift other women up, period. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I think this is like my next calling, my next venture. And so, I mean, that's what we're working on right now. But if you would have asked me three months ago, like, what does next year look like? you know, I am working on some apps and platforms and software things. And you know, there's all these little projects on the side, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to focus on a few things that will make a difference for other women who need to be lifted up. And when you can be, and you know this, because after you speak, you know, people come up to you and they're crying and they're hugging you and they're like, thank you. And it's the same joy that you get out of at the end of the night of a wedding. And typically you know, people are hugging and saying, thank you. Every once in a while, they're screaming at you and they're cussing at you and they're putting you down because you were counting on other people and they didn't quite perform the way they were supposed to, but it's your fault. <laughs> so that's where I'm just like, fuck this shit. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and so you find yourself spending your time differently. And yes, we can always be busy, but are you busy doing the right things that are making you happy and what's going to make a difference for other people, which will make a difference for you and, you know, in the long run. But what would you say, like people that, you know, may be experiencing burnout, what is like the top three things that you in going through it, like, what are the first steps to come out of it? And like, I know you said therapy, therapy is good. Therapists are good get a therapist. What are some other things that people can do to help move forward? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a big person in terms of having an aware awareness and being vulnerable. Of course, I'm, you know, a big Brene Brown supporter. So if you haven't seen one of the most famous TED Talks in the world, please mm -hmm. do yourself and watch that if you're listening. But I would say, you know, being vulnerable and telling someone it doesn't have to be therapy but really just telling someone and allowing them to respond to you and believe what they say and i'm not talking about that like skeptical friend or your critical mother or something like that i'm talking about somebody who knows you and loves you and who will respect your feelings because i think that that is a lot of times if we were to look at you know burnout it's a lot of times because we did change what we desired, but we felt either scared or nervous because what does it mean if I'm not this? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Angela, we have such a great industry and, you know, we have good people attract good people. I mean, that's yeah. just the law of life. And so I would say, you know, saying it, right. It's like when you're an alcoholic admitting you have a problem is the first step. I'm not gonna lie, you know, friends out there listening, if you feel burned out, please say something to someone because you never know when someone is going to say something that'll change your life and mm -hmm. either, you know, take a little burden off your shoulder or connect you with somebody. You know, the second thing too, a lot of people ask this when they hear my story about quitting. Um, when I do my keynotes, they, you know, some of the questions I get asked are like, Oh, well, you know, I, I couldn't ever just quit. Um, <laughs> well, you know, first of all, you're not a slave. You, you do. I mean, we all have options every day. I have option to drink champagne while I do this podcast or water. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm water and it's too early for champagne <laughs> or, is it, or, or is it, but you know, we all have choices and we make them every day, but I would say to really listen to yourself limiting talk. Um, you know, there's an example I share where I really always have never enjoyed the gym and I, you know, 
I challenged myself. I, I started listening to the thoughts I would have as I was working out. Oh, Angela, it was horrible. I would never say these things to Aww. my best friend. And I was so mean to myself. I thought that, oh, you know, if I wasn't so overweight, I wouldn't have to work out. Oh, if I hadn't eaten such and such, then, you know, I wouldn't have to be here. So I deserve this uncomfortableness and I deserve this pain and all that kind of stuff. And I had to stop myself and go, oh, I'm a bitch. You know, I mean, it was, <laughs> and mind you, Angela, I've been working out for years, decades. You know, I mean, the second I, I realized that and I started to switch it into, damn, look at me. I am so strong. Like, I can't believe, like, thank goodness for my legs. Thank goodness for my health. Like, also look at me. I'm at the gym with all of these very fit people. I must also be a fit person. Yeah. So that is like the echo that I give myself now. And it's true. I mean, uh, yes, I, I weigh more than some and less than others. It doesn't matter. I'm doing it for my health and those kinds of things. And all of those tropes that sometimes we roll our eyes at, like, oh, well, I'm doing it for myself. Angela, if you go deep enough, you really do start to do stuff for yourself and yeah. not for the applause or not because you think you have to or should or cannot or whatever. So I would say, you know, keeping track of kind of those negative thoughts, especially when we get stressed out, we start to go super negative, um, calling ourselves names or, you know, kind of limiting ourselves before we even get a chance to do something better and change our lives and do something great. And I would say at the end, and this is something that at the end of our episode, your listeners can email me and I'd be happy to share, or we can post it um, in the podcast notes, but I do have a fear listing exercise. Oh, that's awesome. And this is something where, again, you know, I, I, I thank you. I, I would love to hear your feedback on it because at the end of the day, what most people do is either out of avoidance of pain or seeking pleasure. And a lot of times there's a lot of fear wrapped up in our day to day. And at the end of the day, I am so for feeling the fear and doing it freaking anyways. And knowing that there is absolutely nothing in this world I cannot come back from. And that is exactly the same for your listeners. You have been successful. You have failed time and time again, and you have gotten back up. And what, what makes you think that whatever challenge you have or whatever feeling you have, that it's going to defeat you now. Heck no. You're the strongest, best, smartest, most experienced you've ever been. And yet fear is such a silly little bully that makes us feel like we're not in control. And that exercise, I would say, was really, really helpful. When I hear, oh, I can't do something. Like, for example, I'll be honest with you. I take every December off in my business. I have to I, try to do that too. That's amazing. Well, you, and you know why, right? Because yeah. it's a great You've worked damn hard for 11 months and it is a season of celebration and gathering. And I'll be honest, Angela, I miss so many Christmases and Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and joyful moments. I missed my husband graduating from college because I thought I had to work this big catering event Aww. and I'll never get that moment back, mm -mm. but I'm sure it's all going to make a life that's way different. And so, you know, December is just a natural time that I try and take off and work on personal projects and just soak up people. And that's the thing when I thought, oh, I can't. Well, you know, I still have big financial goals. I just do it in 11 months instead of 12. Yeah. Right. And I know I'm speaking to the, the, the profitability and productivity <laughs> queen over there. You're like, hell yes, girl, with the right systems, you can do anything. It's true. So it is. It's true. It's true. Short, you know, it's amazing. We in this industry, we make miracles happen all the time. I would charge, yep. and I think Angela, you'd, you'd echo this. Make a miracle apple happen for yourself. Yep. Think of something you really freaking desire and go after it. Find, you know, again, find someone that's proven it. And if you can, like, if anyone's listening and they know Sarah Blakely from Spanx, call me, message me. I'll do anything to meet Sarah Blakely. And I know oh. that I'll eventually meet her. Because I am so, I so admire her in so many different ways. And I would love to serve and her employees in, in whatever way. And when I tell people that, they're like, ha ha, yeah, I want to meet Beyonce. And I'm like, good. How are you going to meet her? Right. What are you going to say when you're there? What are you going to wear? What, how are you going to serve her? How are you going to be memorably yourself? Yep. And they're like, oh, well, I just wanted to meet them. Hell no. I don't know about you, Angela, but again, we're kindred. We don't do anything half-assed. And that certainly mm -mm. goes for our dreams. 
And that, I will tell you, I'm the ghost of Christmas future. If you are feeling run down, if you are feeling lost, even though you always know what to do, first of all, you're okay. It's going to be fine. And second of all, once you get to the other side of burnout, Angela, I, I, I pop out of the bed every single day without caffeine, pumped to get to serve and talk with awesome people like you and serve great audiences like yours. Because at the end of the day, that's what I'm put on this earth to do. And I feel it so unbelievably passionately that I, I remember loving my jobs previously, but it is different this time because I'm different this time because I am me full blown margarita without the salt. I know, I know it's controversial. I'm just, I'm full blown me. And there are people out there that because I'm doing what I'm doing, I prove the model that they can be themselves and be wildly successful and have a ball and get to meet awesome people and rub shoulders with Angela flip and profit. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you, if you want to, you know, and literally if you, I remember, um, Megan Ely, who yeah. I know we both are huge fans of. Yeah. I, I make Megan blush every time I think I say this, but I was at NACE Experience Conference, which is our national conference. It was in Baltimore and it was maybe about six or seven years ago. And I went to Megan's breakout session mm -hmm. and it was on PR, of course, and it was on storytelling. And I thought halfway through, I was loving the content. Megan, if she comes to your city, you've got to see her speak or sign up for a webinar. She's amazing. Um, and just a wonderful, wonderful hugger too. She gives great <laughs> hugs. But I saw her speak and I was learning so much and I was loving it so much. And I thought, oh, I wish I could do that. Like this would be so fun to do one day. And Megan was one of the first calls that once I started getting very clear on my mission and what I was here on this earth to do and what I wanted to do. I called her up and I said, Megan, do you remember me? Can I Aww. pick your brain? And I drove up to Richmond, um, you know, and, and, and had a, oh, maybe I actually, I surely would just talk to me a phone, but she was such a loving, encouraging presence. And, you know, she was literally, you know, hashtag goals for me. Yeah. And now I'm so proud to share the same conference stages with her and, you know, get to share drinks with her if we're in the same city at the same time and serve on the WIPA board together. She's actually our vice president. Yeah. Um, that's just started and it, it's just, it's awesome. It, it's so great. And I know you share that just joy and thankfulness every day that you're doing what you're made to do and what you love. But to your point about the, the co-working space, I'm very specific on my goals and desires, but how I get there, girl, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I, I don't know what the world's going to serve up, but I am on a swivel and I am like welcome to receive. and. I just, I really hope, you know, someone's out there nodding their head being like, thank you ladies, because yeah. I, I needed this message and I had to go through hell and woof, man, spending a lot differently and changing my lifestyle a lot. But you do, you come back. If you're burned out, you do come back. If you do the deep work, yeah. uh, you come back and it took me less than half the time it did to make six figures in my business now. Because you're so. happy. Like mm -hmm. you're genuinely happy. And that's where so many of us put other people's happiness first before we take a step back and say, well, how can I be happy? And like you said earlier, money's just a tool. And yes, like you can make a living, but are you happy doing what you really want to do? And use your knowledge so that you can build things for yourself and other people that you're happy doing. It seems, it, it's crazy to me, like the simplest things that I've done, I, I just, it's like almost stupid that you don't think of them on your own. But I had a coach once and he's like, why aren't you having life cycle clients? Like, you know, they come in and they trust you. You do their weddings, you do their bar, their little sister or brother bar bat mitzvah. Why are you not doing their company parties? And, you know, he's like, can't you do that? And I'm like, well, yeah. And he's like, well, would you do that? I'm like, well, yeah, because they already trust me and they know me and they don't mind paying for the value and they know what they're getting. And he's like, but do you tell people that? I'm like, no, I guess I don't. So when you start to say what you want and put it out there, and to some people, it seems very unrealistic, like meeting certain people or working with certain brands. People, you know, laugh and they're like, ha you're never going to own a private island. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like, well, if you just say it out loud, people listen 
and you will actually get back what you put out, just like we started the conversation. So things that seem so simple, if you have these thoughts, like say them out loud, someone's going to listen and you will have the opportunities to actually do what your thoughts are, but you just have to say them out loud and like have the courage to do that. <laughs> Amen. And you know, it's like that game of seven degrees, Kevin, of Kevin Bacon. Are you, yeah. familiar with that? you know, it's like literally you think about it and we have one of the coolest industries ever, ever. I'm only two degrees away from Justin Timberlake. I realized mm -hmm. that um, recently by talking to somebody and I was like, oh my God, are you serious? And you know, JT, he's not an aspiration for me. I, you know, I love him, but I don't need to meet him. But that idea, it just solidifies. I am no one, I am no one special. I am somebody who's worked in this industry and who loves serving this industry. But if I had never brought up that, you know, question about like, oh, you know, we're talking about famous people we know or we're related to or things like that, like you never know who is yeah. related to who. I mean, some folks you're like not super proud to be related to or maybe no, <laughs> but on the other side, it's like when you have that desire, anything, anything's possible. Woo, my dog's like, okay, next. <laughs> Fair I know enough. You uh, <laughs> yes, your dog, yes. Your bricks. <laughs> oh yeah, he he's he's my angel. The mailman came by actually earlier in the episode, <laughs> and he was not thrilled. And I was like, "Come on, it's just Amazon. You know this. This happens every day." Yep. But hey, listen, gotta protect the mama. You know, right. I'm sure your, your pup is the same. <laughs> well, I could talk to you all day long. I loved same. talking with you, and thank you so much. Like so, 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 so much for sharing just guidance and inspiration and going through the trenches and being real and being honest. And I feel like this is one of the most inspirational podcasts we've put out because there's a lot of people, I mean, I love everybody I talk to, but we have so much in common. We're like separated at birth. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, I've been there. Yes. Oh my God. Um, but if people want to get in touch with you, what is the best way for them to find you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, thanks for having me on and the feelings are so mutual. If people want to reach out, I do do a lot of dog posting over on my Instagram. <laughs> so I'm at rachel.sheeran. Um, I'm also a huge proponent of LinkedIn. I got to tell you professionally, I think LinkedIn is one of the most underutilized services. I actually booked a keynote in Barcelona, just wow. simply based on LinkedIn. So I'm at, um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, just Rachel Sheeran, find me on there. And then I've, I'm a huge person on email. So my email is simply hi at rachelsheeran.com and you, you can check out my website as well. Awesome. And it's Rachel and then S H E E R I N. Uh -huh. So Absolutely. that's awesome. And well, then thank if you. it's great with you, I, I oh, sorry, I was no, going to say, if it's, if it's great with you, I would love to also add on that um, resource that I was talking about. Yes, the yes, please. Um, work How do we get for it? you? Absolutely. I'll go ahead and send you a link. Um, it can link directly to my site or yours, whatever's best for you, Angela, but take a look at it. It's got a link to a video as well, um, where you can kind of get a background on it. And if you check out my website, there's a few resources on burnout as well. You can take my, are you burned out? Buzz, uh, Buzzfeed style quiz. I always love quizzes. So I made my own, um, and a few different resources too. So if somebody, you know, it, whether it be your yourself or someone you love is experiencing burnout, hopefully those resources can kind of guide them, um, you know, first to acceptance and then guide them for next steps with it. I love it. So, and we'll put that in the show notes. So it's, it's, it's really easy. All you got to do is click. <laughs> it's not hard people. <laughs> Absolutely. Even, even us lazy, extroverted, fast paced folks. We're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Click. Yes. Done and done. We're, yep. we're good. Yep. All you got to do. That, that's like my favorite saying is people here like, all you got to do is like go buy some spray paint and like spray the DIY. And I'm like, no, that's all no. a whole different topic. But uh, oh, yeah, Angela, we are. So, <laughs> yes. But thank you so much for your time today. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much. Be sure that you check out rachelsheeran.com and email her at hi, just simple. Hi at rachelsheeran.com. Be sure that you check out the resources click on that link. And if you are feeling burned out, this could be the most important podcast you listen to all year because it really could help you 
get into a better place and a happy place for you and your future and your career. So thanks so much for listening to another episode of Weddings Unveiled and be sure to listen next week so you don't miss any of the juicy details that we're talking about. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.